Hey guys, so uh, this is a uh, Belgian telephone, um, a Belgian example of a lookalike of the uh, SEL Assistant, a Descendant. And this one, don't know what model it is, but it's made by BTMC, Bell Telephone Manufacturing Company of Anvers, Belgium. And this one, I believe, is from the mid-60s. You, you'll notice the first thing of this phone is the cracks in the front. I was fully aware that the phone had cracks in it already. Um, I couldn't resist buying it. I actually bought it from uh, uh, eBay France, and they were gracious enough to uh, ship over here to the United States. Given that it cracks, um, I wanted to buy it anyway because of the uh, nice light blue color. So uh, it's in good shape despite the cracks. I can fix those um, with some super glue. And they're clean cracks too. There's nothing broken off except for the little chip there. I also knew the chip was there. It's well packed. Um, they didn't take the handset off the cradle, but it didn't further any of the damage, which was okay. Um, yeah, so here's a look, look around. You'll notice that it looks a lot like a FETAF 611, um, the SEL, SEL Assistant, of course. Also, the uh, Geraldo telephone from Citessa. But you'll notice that it has a different type of dial on it. This one's uh, specifically a BTMC dial. Not sure what model it is, but it's from 1965. And it still has its dial center cover on it, so I can put in a number card. It also has the golden numbers as well. Um, spins okay. I'm just going to need an oil into it. This phone also has the grounding button, also known as the earthing button. Um, nothing really differ different other than the dial. I do have the cover loose, so I'll show you that. Uh, I want to also point out that normally these phones have a stamp on the back with the Bell Manufacturing Company on uh, right here. This one happens to not have it, or it might have been uh, rubbed off. Uh, it's unfortunate that this phone has a damage. I believe it might have been from uh, a fall from its time in use or after its use. Uh, maybe someone was moving and they dropped it. But, oh well, things happen, no biggie. I'm just glad this didn't end up in the trash. It's such a nice, nice shade of blue. I really like it. Here's a look at the inside. It looks just like the uh, Geraldo telephone, as well as my uh, standard radio and telephone uh, SU-62 from uh, Sweden. You'll see the concentrically mounted uh, bell ringer, dual gong, the network here, and the switch here, the hook, look just like an early Geraldo telephone. Their ca capacitors are marked with uh, bell using the uh, similar Hawthorne font as found on the Western Electric products. And this might have been their logo. Their schematic is right here. And you have the different translations of the colors in four different languages. Because uh, Belgium and France weren't the only countries that these phones were imported to. They were also found in Peru. So... Here's a look what the dial looks like. Yeah, you can see it's from January 1965. Very different workings from what I'm used to. This is the first phone um, with this dial of its kind that I have in, in the collection. So this will be, I don't think it'll be too difficult. I probably don't really need to take the whole dial apart other than just um, clean the gears a little bit and do the drops of oil. It's a nice quality dial too. It's a close look. I've always liked the golden numbers on these European phones. 
I believe these dials were also found on the Australian um, uh, 800, the 801s for the Postmasters General. I think they use these models. Here's a look at the uh, earthing button. It's mounted on a metal post and screwed down and it won't break. We'll put this back on its holder. It's kind of easy to move with one hand, but do what you gotta do. It's got an extra long line cord, and I am unsure if it's the original one or not because the leads are in colors that um, don't really match the rest of the wires on the phone. And you can tell that the there were no spade tips on this either. This might have been the original. I might be wrong. But I think I will shorten it because there's no plug on it and the uh, leads aren't there. So I think it would kind of help um, to shorten it to a more manageable length. And of course the handset cord is in good shape as well. There's no splits, just needs a clean. Also give you a closer look at the shell. So here's what the cracks look like. This one almost goes all the way through the front. And there's a crack here too. So, just a little super glue, and we will be good to go. Also got to be careful with cleaning the phone, especially when I'm polishing, because I don't want to further any damage. There's no nothing, no stickers or anything, because I've already got the schematic right there. Even this insert for the button is a little bit damaged. but no biggie. So yeah. And since I did this, everything in one video, had the cover off, um, I won't have to do any photos on the at the end because you already know what the inside looks like here's a look at the receiver and the transmitter capsules you'll notice some similarities once again here's the transmitter it looks just like one found in a Spanish Geraldo phone made by Citessa. And this one is from 1964, I think. Yep, December 1964. This one looks like a, uh, for the receiver, 1965, February. Looks like one found in a G-style handset in a Western electric 500 or 554 and a lot of other Western electric phones of the same period. So yeah, I will have, uh, of course, a final checkout video of this phone. And I do have more videos coming soon, once again. And, uh, I hope you enjoyed watching this, and I will get started very soon with this phone. So expect a final checkout um, in a little while. So thank you very much for watching, and have a great day. Thank you.